Bibles up to Revelation chapter 2. Oh. Revelation 2, that'll be our first passage in just a moment. And Paul, very, very thankful to be here. But I want to just let you know, I want to say if you kind of introductory statements to later on. I know there's a, there's a time frame on these first couple of classes, so we'll just go right into our study. Um, just got, you know, 10 or 15 minutes is, is all that's left. So I'm going to go as quick as I can through. We'll skip some things at the end. Hopefully it'll still be of some value to us. And I'll, I'll, I'll confess, I, I get excited and I talk fast. And that's when things are normal. Things are not normal when i got 10 minutes. So grab on because we'll fix the move. But Aaron had let me know that, that throughout the year, you guys were looking at faith, um, a study, a yearly theme, I guess, of faith. So I wanted to, I wanted to kind of um, help with that and just be a, be a part of that. James chapter 2, your faith without works is dead. If our faith doesn't, if it's never useful for us, if it's not there for us when we need it, what do we got? We got nothing. So what I want us to do is just look at some things, hopefully throughout this week, that, that, that our faith can help us with. A faith to overcome. That was one of the, the themes to the, the seven churches in Asia. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, to the church at Ephesus. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. To him that overcomes, I will give him to eat of the tree of life. Drop down to verse 11. To the church at Smyrna. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He that ever comes will not be hurt by the second death. And that, that phrase, he that overcomes, is mentioned to all of the seven churches that, that this letter was given to. So what I want us to look at today um, is a faith that will help us overcome our weaknesses. So let's look at that for just a moment. Um, we're looking at individual weaknesses in this. I hope that this will be a lesson we can apply to ourselves. What are, no, no short what are your weaknesses? What are your individual weaknesses? So, well, you know, I, I really have to work to control my temper. Um, I really have to fight to control my tongue. I have to really fight to control lustful thoughts. But, but everybody has weaknesses. Think of my weaknesses. I'll think of mine. You think of yours. How do we overcome them? That's what we're going to look at. So hurriedly in this, 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 this little bit of time, let's look at some things that can help us. Do we have weaknesses? Yes. Can we overcome them? With, with a strong enough faith? Yes. So let's look at some of them. What, let's first of all emphasize a couple of facts, and that is we are not helpless to them. Look at 1 Corinthians 10. If nobody's perfect, we like to say that right, all of us have weaknesses. We like to be mindful of that, right? That's just the way I am. And then we throw deity into it. God made me like this. We don't accept that from the homosexual, do we? Um, God made me like this. That's just the way I am. We don't accept that from the alcoholic, do we? And yet we, we're okay with throwing that statement out to justify our anger, to justify our lack of control of tongue, to justify whatever lustful impulses we may have. We, mm. Are we okay with that? Mm. First Corinthians chapter 10, probably a memory verse, but let's just break it down a little bit. We are not helpless <laughs> with our weaknesses. There's no temptation taking you, but it's common to man. Newer versions say, but that can be bared. There is no temptation that man cannot bear. But God is faithful. Now, that's an interesting statement. Your yearly theme is faith. Our faith. Your faith. Individual faith. Maybe we are as faithful as we ought to be. But God clearly says about himself, I am faithful. So we can trust Him. What are we going to trust Him? <coughs> God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able. This, this verse just keeps building. There's no temptation that you can't handle. Why? Because I'm faithful. You can trust me. And I'm not going to let it happen if you can't handle it. 
If you're not ready for it, I won't let it happen. Do you trust him? He says he's faithful. Do you trust him? Think back to, to, the, to the events in Job's life. When that, for lack of a better word, that contest happened between God and Satan. Have you seen my servant Job? Well, yeah, you got a head around him. <laughs> You can take his health. You can take his family. You can take his children. You can take his money. You can take his reputation. But you can't take his life. And you know what happened? Satan didn't take his life. You know why? Because he can't do what he's not allowed to do. There will be no temptation come to us that we're not able to bear. Which, you want to be humbled? That means every sin we committed. Every temptation that was put in front of me and you, all those we didn't bear up under, God thought we could handle it. He's faithful. Do you trust Him? You will, I will not suffer you. I will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, which means every temptation we have faced, God thought we were able. He's faithful. Sometimes we are not. With the temptation, there is a way of escape in which you are able to bear it. He thought we were able to bear it. He gave us a way so that we could bear it. Sometimes we didn't take it. You know what that comes down to? Choices. You know what that comes down to? Weaknesses. We're not at their mercy. We are not helpless in this. Turn back to chapter 6. Here's a long list of sin. A long list of potential weaknesses that I might have, that you might have. But we are not helpless to, against them. You remember them in verse 9? Do you not understand? Do you not know? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of, of God, but be not deceived. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, abusers of themselves with man, thieves, covetous, drunkenness, revilers, extortioners. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11. And such were some of you. All that list which is listed, those were weaknesses of the Corinthian brethren. This is what you were. Such were some of you. But... You have been washed, you have been sanctified, you have been justified in the name of the Lord. We are not at their mercy. The Corinthians dealt with these weaknesses, but me and you may be dealing with some of these very weaknesses, but we can be washed, we can be sanctified. We're not at their mercy. We're not helpless. But we're going to have to fight, aren't we? And sometimes we don't fight very well. Let's be honest. If we ever stop fighting, they will consume us. We're not at their mercy, but if we give ourselves up to them, we wave the flag to them. God made me this way. Well, you know, I, I had this trouble with this, with this temptation. And you know what? My dad did, and my mom did, and my gra It's just in my family. So we just accept it. And we stop fighting it. They'll destroy us. Look in Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. We're looking at specifically Cain here, but we want to apply it to ourselves. And it's an, a well known event. We're not going to remind ourselves of the event. But there's an interesting statement made in verse 7. After the fact, after the brother's already dead, after the, the, the murder has taken place, now it's as if Cain, here's Cain having this conversation with God. In verse 7, if you do well, Will you not be accepted? That's a rhetorical question. Can you know that if you do what I command, there are blessings that come with that. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, doesn't sin lie at the door? And unto you shall be his desire, and you must rule over it. You must rule over it. Sin is at the door. Lying ready to pounce, and you've got to control that. You've got to rule it. How many times has it been flip flopped on that? Sin ruling over us. 
the temptation taking control over us. Somebody is ruling somebody. Something is in charge constantly. And what he's asking Cain is, which one is it? Do you control the temptation or does the temptation control you? Who is ruling who here? Because the answer to that question kind of determines our destiny, doesn't it? Who controls who? Controls who? Do we control temptation or does it control us? The answer to that has eternal consequences. So I ask the question, how hard are you fighting? A lot of times we are overtaken. A lot of times it is, since we're using the word, a weakness. Sometimes we just don't fight. Sometimes we just lay down and let it take us. Sometimes with eyes wide open, it's not a weakness, it's just a decision. How much fight do we really put up? How much internal effort to master the temptation do we really strive for? Because when we stop fighting, everything is compromised. We fight on. Taught for 12 years, coached football and baseball. One of my coaching buddies that I was with, he, 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 he was addicted to, to nicotine. Um, and he was telling me one time, he said, yeah, I, I never go to bed with, with, unless I have my morning's dip. So if, if at 10 o'clock at night, he, fin he, 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 he finished it up, well, he's going to get the go and go to the gas station. So I will, I, when I wake up in the morning, I have to have this. And I will, I'm not going to bed if I'm not going to be prepared for that. That's a provision. That's what we're talking about here. Most weaknesses. I don't want to say all, but, but most. Mm -hmm. There's some kind of provision that's got to be made. Whether that's a certain place, uh, whether it's a certain website or sites, plural. Maybe it's money. Maybe it is the people that, that we would be with. Maybe it's the time necessary. Mm -hmm. But there are some provisions that have to be made to fulfill some weaknesses. Look at Romans chapter 13. Here's what it says about that. Romans chapter 13. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. There's temptation. There is a lust. And what you want, Paul's telling the Romans, most of them have to have some forethought. Most of them, have, there has to be some forethought, some provisions made. Make no provision for the flesh in order to fulfill lust. Starve the weakness. And we talk about starving, uh, what it, it's starving a virus. Don't let, it, don't, don't let it feed. Starve the weakness. What if those provisions are? <clears throat> Remove those provisions. Battles can be hard, and this is a battle, and but we don't play around with certain things. Could you imagine there's a, a there, there's a test done in your house and oh there, there's carbon monoxide. Oh no, it's just a little bit. You okay with you know, a little bit? You can are you okay with a little bit of carbon monoxide in your house? There's a test done in your house. Oh, there's some radiation right now. Oh it, it, it's minor. Are you okay with a little bit of radiation in your house? No, we don't play with that. We want it gone. Carbon monoxide, we don't play with it. Radiation, we don't play with it. Sins, weaknesses, things we know we have some issues with, and we play with it. We make provisions for it. We have these things that allows them to remain. These are the things that we're talking about. That's what we have to deal with. A couple minutes over already, so let me just run through. 
things we have to do. We're not going to be at the mercy of them, but there's going to have to be some change taking place. We can, I, I can work that in. We can talk about that later on. We're going to have to replace the weakness with something good. We still have time. We've still got all this the, have time on our hands that we're no longer giving provision for to the flesh. But we've got to fill that with something else. So we'll, we'll, we'll find a way to work that in later on. And then we've got Jesus' example. If my weaknesses are, if it's pride, well, let, let's, let's go back and let's restudy his humility. If my personal weakness is uh, tongue issues or lust issues, then let's go back and let's restudy about his self-control. If my personal weakness is selfishness, then let's go back and let's relook at his selflessness. If my weakness is, is immorality, then let's go back and look at his purity. If my weakness is stubbornness, then let's go back and look at his obedience. We have his example, ample example. Whatever issues we're dealing with, whatever weaknesses we're dealing with, there's probably an example within Scripture of another who had the very same thing. So let's learn from that. I've gone over just a little bit. I'm sorry for that. Let's have a prayer, though, before we break off and, and go to our Bible classes. God and Father, we're so thankful to you this morning. We're thankful that it's the Lord's Day. We're thankful that on, on our Lord's Day so many years ago, your son came forth from the grave, conquered death, became the first fruits for us to follow. And so help us let that, that wonderful hope of resurrection, of, of, of part of us that can be eternal with you, help us to to let that control our thoughts, help it to control our minds, help it control, it, control our decision making. When those individual weaknesses and struggles and temptations that we have come before us, help us always recognize the, the temporary nature of the fleshly things. And as we continue out through this week, we follow as we work on our faith, as we strive to be stronger, help us to have a faith that helps us overcome these various weaknesses, whatever they may be. And we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen.